this is a pet ct machine okay what is the meant by pet ct it's a different machine where we can both trace both biological and anatomical imaging through a biograph machine so basically it is an image and fusion okay the ct is only meant for morphological function and the pet is used for metabolic imaging so by combining these two we have a very wonderful results this is an image which showing that by fusioning of two images we can achieve more when compared to the individual scans or individual machines the imaging goals in head, head and neck cancer are detection of unknown primary tnm staging detection of synchronous primary therapy response assessment detection of recurrence and radiotherapy planning in unknown primary when a patient presented with a carcinoma and we don't know where the cancer is present we have to see that 5 to 10% of the patients of head and neck cancers present with a neck mass and the pet ct will definitely approximately identify 30% of the patients who has head and neck cancers and it can guide the site of biopsy this is a one of the patient who presented with a left neck nodes and we have done a pet ct scan which showed us to be a left palatine toxic carcinoma so on the left of my side is a ct image and a neck node this patient also presented with only a neck node swelling okay by doing a pet ct we have found a very minor lesion approximately 1 cm lesion at the base of the tongue so in unknown primary cases what i already discussed is pet ct will helpful in finding of the unknown primary in approximately 30% of the cases when a patient presented with a lymph node metastasis or anything else which proved to be squamous cell carcinoma first we have to do the physical examination go for office endoscopy and mri if it is negative for anything go for a pet ct if pet ct is also negative you have to go for strategic surgical biopsies but after confirming with the pet ct if you see a disease foci you have to go for the pan endoscopy and frozen section biopsy so then we can proceed according to the treatment pet ct is accurate at the time of diagnosis and it is helpful in the treatment planning and the determination of prognosis one of the most attractive feature of pet ct is that it covers the most of the body within a single study when compared to the ct or mri which only covers chest or lung or respective body but in pet ct we can cover whole the head to toe in a single study pet ct provides information on primary tumor nodal metastasis distant meds and potentially second primary carcinoma numerous studies have shown the pet ct is very sensitive as compared to the mri and ct in detecting the primary tumor okay the t staging also has some limitations with the pet ct when there are small submucosal lesion perineural spread lesions or physiological uptake lesions can be missed this is a case of a left buccal mucosal carcinoma with the re retromolar trigone extension the presence of what about the role of in nodal staging the presence of metastatic lymph nodes in ipsilateral and contralateral side will decrease the five year disease specific survival by 50 to 30% so this is a case of a carcinoma soft palate with suspicious nodal metastasis if you see in a ct image we can't find it out whether we have mets or not so by doing a pet ct scan there you can find a level 2 b node which is known to be positive and we have done a fnac which came out to be positive so the stage of this patient has been changed and the we can clearly explain the prognosis of the patient that this patient has limited survival rate this is another case of base uh, base of the tongue with bilateral neck nodes basically in any carcinoma there will be an ipsilateral side of metastasis will be more and the contralateral side we will be missing it so by doing the pet ct we can mostly find out the bilateral neck metastasis and we can be the upper hand in uh, explaining the patient the prognosis and the treatment options for the patient this is a, another case of carcinoma supraglottis with a bilateral extensive nodal metastasis see on the left of the image there is only by if you see the red arrow mark there is only subcentimetric uh, lymph node metastasis which is on the contralateral side which can be easily missed by the ct and mri 
This is a screen showing the sensitivity and specificity of uh, CT and MRI. And you can clear, clearly see that PET CT has more sensitive and specificity when compared to the CT or MRI alone or both combined. These are the multiple studies have shown that PET CT has significant important role in detection of the cervical lymph node metastasis. Coming to the M stage, PET CT helps in detecting distance metastasis in 25% of the patients. And the distant mets are most commonly found in lungs, mediastinal nodes, bone, and liver. If you see this case, patient presented with a flora of mouth, which is having a, a cervical lymph node and a lung nodules also, which are found to be after biopsy, it's a malignant. And this is a case of CA oropharynx with lung nodules and a liver metastasis. You can see that here, there is a liver metastasis and a segment six of liver. This is another case of carcinoma with nodal metastasis and a skeletal metastasis. Another feature is uh, when a CT or MRI, if there is any lytic changes or sclerotic changes only, we can find there is a disease of present or not. But in PET and MRI, we can find out in PET CT, we can find out in only when there is a marrow lesion is there. See, if you see the image, we are not getting anything in the CT image, but the PET is showing update, which is known to be metastatic. This is uh, another case of early marrow metastasis. If you see the left of the image of the CT image, which is showing no lytic or sclerotic change, but if you go through the PET, PET CT image fusion image, you can see that there is a marrow lesion, which is a metastatic lesion. So PET CT in uh, M staging, it changes the detection of distant metastasis and helps in modification of treatment. If you don't find out the metastatic treatment, your treatment approach will only limited to the localized disease. But if you found to, to be a distant metastasis, the treatment approach will be entirely changed. So PET CT plays an important role in these cases. And another role of PET CT is in detection of synchronous primaries. See, the patient can only present, cannot only present with one carcinoma. He can present with another carcinoma also, especially in head and neck cancer. Why it can be more common in head and neck cancers? Yes. These patients can be a drug abusers like uh, cigarettes and anything else, and they have a good car chewing capabilities. So by doing a PET CT, there is, we have found out that approximately 8% of the patients will be having synchronous primary. See, this is a case of uh, C at tongue, and this fellow is having another carcinoma in see a lung with bilateral lung meds. This is another case of base of tongue with a CA lung. This is another case of CA tongue and uh, tonsillar fossa with upper iso cervical esophagus carcinoma. This is a uh, case of uh, study which showing that synchronous primary are present approximately they have conducted a study of 590, 589 patients and found to be 62%, approximately 8% of the patients. And the most common carcinomas will be present in head, lung. First one is lung, next to head and neck cancers, esophagus, and another 18% from the colon, stomach, breast, and thymus, and kidney. How will the PET CT changes the management? PET CT definitely changes the management and improves prognostic stratification in patients with head and neck cancer. PET also detects additional sites of disease and improves classification of patients into curative and palliative categories. This is the one of the important role by doing the PET CT. How it will change the management means it differentiate whether the patient will fit into curative or into palliative categories. Okay. There is an another important role in head and neck cancers of PET CT is in radiotherapy planning. Because in radiotherapy planning, it reduces the interabsorber variability in gross tumor volume. It may increase the gross tumor volume also. This is a classical case which we have recently done around one month back. This is a patient presented with uh, nosopharyngeal carcinoma. So the patient has been sent, sent for uh, radiotherapy planning. They have undergone MRI, MRI which showed that asymmetrical tissue in the left nasopharynx region. But radiotherapy counterline and circle was that on that region only. You can see on the image here. But we have done a PET CT which showed an abnormal metabolic activity crossing midline from the left nasopharynx to the right nasopharynx 
suggesting the extent of tumor larger suggested than the MRI. See, if you go through the MRI image, you, this patient would have presented with another recurrence within the just three months on the contralateral side. So this is the role of PET-CT, which can change the treatment plan in RT planning. This is a classical study showing uh, intensity modification, uh, IMRT study showing that PET-CT improves treatment of outcome of locally advanced pharyngeal carcinoma. By doing a RT planning, you will change the treatment response, local regional outcome, and overall survival rate is more when compared to the PET-CT guided RT plannings. The overall survival and disease-free survival rate was 82% and two years rate was 74%. The most important point is a high level of disease control combined with favorable toxicity profiles was achieved in patients of head and neck cancers receiving PET-CT fusion-guided radiotherapy plus or minus chemotherapy.